kick it yeah. to give testimony is to use your testimony uh, your faith to borrow it to somebody else and to listen to the testimony is to borrow faith from that person who has encountered God. Wan 他先生的腰又不行所以他越想越是这句话你不必说什么所以我们把一切的荣耀要归给我们的神送他的医生姑姑是能够带着我们全家一起来祷告我们跟旁边人说多祷告多有能力多祷告多有恩典所以多多祷告感谢主 this morning uh, the topic of this sermon is we can start new again okay, so I want to do the declaration Sorry, with you this I have morning. no English but you guys can receive it by faith alright 我们一起来宣告来我奉耶稣基督的名宣告我会为耶稣赢得更多的灵魂所有机会的门都会为我打开阿们所以我们相信因为有耶稣所以我们可以重新来过如果你有圣经跟我一起打开路加福音第五章第一节到十一节 Verse 1 to 11. 
Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. When you get there, read whether it's in English or Chinese, let's read together. Jesus在格尼撒勒湖边，众人涌住他，要听神的道。他见有两只船弯在湖边，那鱼的人却离开船，希望去了。有一只船是西门的，耶稣就上去，请他把船撑开，周围离岸，就坐下，把船上。在教训人讲完了对西门说把船开到水深之处下网打鱼夫西门说夫子我们整夜劳力并没有打着什么但鱼从你的话我们就下网他们下了网就圈住许多鱼网险些裂开便招呼那只船上的同伴来帮助他们
miracles and signs and wonders will happen. But more importantly is that you would open your heart to receive Amen. Jesus. Because if Jesus comes into my heart, then I am completely fulfilled. And so every day, I want to open up my heart to Jesus. And even in the disappointment, Peter, because Jesus came to his boat and stood on his boat to preach, after the sermon was done, Jesus said to Peter, go and drive your boat out into the sea. If I were Peter, I'd say, please, Jesus, come on. I'm a fisherman, and you are the carpenter. You are a carpenter. Okay, all right. How could I not know where there is not fish? But Peter had a, something that was a uh, little off. And he had something special is that when he heard Jesus say something, he obediently... So my, hope, my hope is that every single one of us as we hear God's word this morning that we would be obedient. A lot of times it's not because God can't bless us. But it's because when God does send his word to us, we think it over and then in the end we still decide to do it the way that we want to do it. Submitting to God's word is going to fulfill every promise in your life. Because God's promise has never failed before. And I believe, you know, even the, the hard copy Bibles is, is better. I want to encourage you to hold on to your Bible all the time. Read the word of God and believe in the things that God is saying to you. And so when Peter heard Jesus' command, he went out into the sea. And Peter said, throw the net over and catch your fish. About two years ago, I remember going out with three other brothers to go and catch fish. Again, all day, all night, I didn't catch a single fish. So now we know that <laughs> Pastor Andrew does not have a fishing anointing. And so when we came home that day, we were a little frustrated. Especially uh, an a unbeliever that went out with us. Because he, he heard that pastors are going to go fishing. There must be fish. But when evening came, we came home, nothing was in the hands. Actually, during that time, our boat was ready to come back to shore. The brother was already starting the boat to come back. And I started to pray, God, you have to, you have to hear my prayer. God, I may not have, you know, the reputation to catch fish, but, but God, you do. So I just grabbed the la last bit of bait that we had. And I used the fisher, fishing pole and I just swung it out. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> when you go fishing, you got to say, in the name of Jesus. And I slung, swung it out. All of a sudden, I felt something catch. So I started to reel it in. And the brother said, you caught seaweed, pastor. I was about to say, shut up. 
And this unbeliever looked and said, it looks like he's catching a real fish. It was real, I'm not joking, it's not a fake story. It's true. And when I was catching the fish, the boat was already driving. Oh my goodness, there really is a God. And so just as uh, this opportunity, I took this opportunity. I swung it out again. And as I swung it out, caught another one. And I said, Pastor, there's, there's no such thing as such good luck. You, you, you must have caught some seaweed. So really, really, all of a sudden, another fish. Amen. Amen. There's two fish. And these two fish, I said, come on, let's go home. And when this happened, this unbeliever said, wow, really is a God. We didn't catch any fish, but Pastor praying went and caught two fish for his wife. Brother and sister, it wasn't bought at 99 rand. So I know what that joy is. That when Peter was obedient and he threw his net out, that he caught a full net of fish. If we submit to God's word, we will truly be blessed. It will be blessed. It's not what I'm saying. It's what God said that he will bless us. In Deuteronomy, it says that if we submit to God's word, then we will gain more favor. Do not doubt anymore. People's words may not have power, but God's words definitely has power. Amen. Amen. And so they got a whole net full of fish. Uh, Simon, it says that Simon Peter, he was astonished. Wow. Brothers and sisters, these guys are fishermen. They caught so much fish to the point where these fishermen were like, wow, astonished. I, I, I believe they've probably never even caught this many fish before in their whole life. And so they actually called another boat to come and help bring this fish in. I believe. And I declare that in our business, in our homes, in our church, that we will have this blessing. That when Christina goes out on this travel, Amen. that she will have this blessing. Wow, praise God. And so we, 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 hear, we see in the Bible that when they encountered this testimony, Jesus said to Peter, now follow me. But Jesus says, from this day forward, I call you not fisher, fishermen, but fishers of men. And so Jesus laid everything down to go and follow Jesus. And so what we're saying is if you would just um, really genuinely follow Jesus, you would receive more than you ever thought you could receive. Not only that you would, you know, earn and, and receive the things that you need in your life, but even more so that you would receive so much Amen. that you could bless and help others. We will uh, fish, uh, gain more men than even fish. A lot of times we will fail. Amen. 
the way. Jesus said to Peter, "Let's read this together." Let's read this together. 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 Let's read this We see Jesus gave Peter a call. He said, "Come, follow me." Jesus also gave Peter a commission, saying, "Go and be a fisher of men." And Jesus also gave him a command, saying, "Go and be a fisher of men." Peter immediately replied, "Yes, Jesus, I will lay everything down to follow you." Peter immediately replied, "Yes, Jesus, I will lay everything down to follow you." Peter immediately replied, "Yes, Jesus, I will lay everything down to follow you." Peter immediately replied, "Yes, Jesus, I will lay everything down to follow you." Peter immediately replied, "Yes, Jesus, I will lay everything down to follow you." Is not a too emotional type person. Peter has a job to do. He's he's. He has a job to do. He's he's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's somebody that needs to earn the things that he needs. He's A mother-in-law. So I know that Peter is somebody that needs to provide for his family. But through the experience of this man, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But after encountering this testimony, he was able to provide for his family. But if Peter can wholeheartedly follow Jesus, then there must have been a way that God made. So if you're following Jesus, do not be afraid. God has made a way. 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 After many years of following Jesus, when Jesus is about to go to the cross, Jesus is about to go to the cross. 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 I believe that Peter is a man of influence. He said, "That when he said, then also others began to say the same thing." Peter said, "What? What did Peter say?" He said, "Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you." Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will not deny you. No idea what would he just said, but <laughs> you got a great friend that will die for you. Ah,、uh, okay, amen. He said, "Jesus said, 'Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you.' Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. Even if I have to die with you, then I will die with you. So if you have a friend like this in your life, wow, that's awesome, man. So Peter 夸下了海口 So you know Peter even was the one that 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 stepped out of the boat. 他说约翰雅各其他的人，他们可能都会跌倒，但我彼得不绝对不跌倒 Peter said, "I am the one that will not fall. I will not fail you, Jesus." Amen. 非常有自信 He had a lot of confidence. But Jesus says, "No, Peter, you will deny me three times." So Jesus 就呃彼得就说 ，No, no, no, Jesus, 你不认识我。Peter 说，我是彼得哎。Peter said, "No, no, no, Jesus, you don't know me. I'm Peter. Come on." 
I tell you the truth, three times you will deny me. I want to ask you, how many of you guys have ever said something like this before? No matter, I I made this mistake, but never, never, never again will I make the same mistake. Anybody ever made this mistake? All the wives. I came to a very perfect church. Everybody's so perfect. Have you ever failed before? Have you ever had this experience of failing? Have you ever said, oh, from this day forward, I will always sleep earlier? But then the next day, you still slept at 1 or 2 a.m. This is the last, last bite I'm going to eat of this cake. Then no more, I will not eat any more cake. And then you, you still ate the whole cake. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Pastor Charlie always says, I'm trying to go on a diet. But every time he sees a cake, he says, God, we'll start tomorrow. I love eating peanut stuff. I eat it to the point where I can't stop eating it. So I tell myself, last five peanuts. And I take the five and I separate it from the other. And then I put the, the, the box of peanuts into the cupboard. So I take those five peanuts and I slowly eat them. After five peanuts, I go and grab the box from the cupboard again. <laughs> Have you ever said, from this day on, I will not buy this product anymore? And after a while, you say, oh, God will, God will give me grace for this. What I want to say is that we all have weakness, right? Amen. Peter said, Even though Peter declared so so confidently, I will go and die on the cross with you. But Peter didn't know that he had so much weakness in him. Let's see what Peter's weakness was. Now, when Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him, she was also standing in the crowd afar looking at what was going to happen to Jesus. So there was this girl that looks at Peter and says, Hey, I recognize you. You're somebody that went with follow Jesus. And all of a sudden Peter freaked out and said, No, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Wasn't it just a couple hours ago that Peter said, I'm going to go and die with you, Jesus? But then all of a sudden, there's just this server girl that comes, and he's, he's freaked out. And so all of a sudden, he cut off all relationship with Jesus. What are you talking about? I didn't know that. <laughs> all right. 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 Now, 
光。又有一个人认识彼得 ，another servant there that recognized Jesus,、uh, Peter. Peter said, "No, I don't know him." And Peter said again, "No, no, 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 I don't know Jesus." This time, he wasn't just denying. And this time, he wasn't just denying. He said, "I confess, I have never seen that man." He not only denied it, but he said, "I, I promise, I have no、right、relation to Jesus." I, I, I confess, I really don't know who he is. I promise you, I have no idea who he is. He denied to the point where he even had to swear or make an oath. He denied to the point where he even had to swear or make an oath. Amen. 软不软弱 ？Is that weakness or not? Peter 软不软弱 ？Is Peter weak? 我跟你讲，还不够软弱。我们再看他，我们再看他怎么软弱。Okay? Let's see again. 来，过了不多时，站在旁边的人前来对彼得说：“你真是他们一党的，你的口音把你露出出来。”彼得就发咒起誓说：“我不认得那个人。”历史七就叫了。哦、oh, ，第三次。第三，人家又认出他的口音，他露了馅了，对吧 ？Another another person recognized Peter. Peter 就说：“我不认识他。” He said again, "I don't, I don't know him." I swear, I don't know Jesus. If I knew Jesus, then I, I would go and die. I would, I don't know. I, I would get hit by a car. I don't know what that's. That if, if I were, if I knew Jesus, I would sell my whole house and everything for, I don't know. Doesn't make sense in English. Okay, no descendant. Yeah. So you see, Peter, he was so weak, but he had such a strong faith. You see, he 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 denied to the point where he even cursed. You see, he 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 denied to the point where he even cursed. I want to say, if we are people, then we all have weaknesses. Amen. 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 Now is the end of March. This year, I'm going to read this Bible and finish it. No matter what happens, I'm going to read past Egypt. Are we weak or not? 我觉得我需要花更多时间来祷告，来亲近神。We need to pray and and come before the Lord. 但是，一跪下来，就一直是下来。But once we sit down, kneel down before the Lord, and we start to lose sense of prayer. 我记得以前我们在中学练习的时候。I remember when I was in seminary. 我们一起祷告。We would pray together. 大概有差不多两百个学生，我们一起每个礼拜都在课程接下来。About two hundred students all together praying. 我们一个同学每次祷告的时候就很大声。And there was a, a student that every time he would pray, he would pray very loud. 他在祷告的时候，主啊，主啊，主啊。Say Lord, Lord, Lord. 有一天院长说不要再主了，再主谁都不好。One day, one of the teachers said, "Don't Lord, Lord, Lord anymore, because the water is going to burst." 我们承认有软弱的人，对吧 ？A lot of times we have weaknesses. 我们信心上有软弱。We have weakness in our faith. 我们在爱心上也有软弱。We have weakness in our ability to love others. 有时候我们在肉体上有软弱。Sometimes we have weakness in our flesh. 有时候我们里面的良心有软弱。Sometimes we have weakness in our heart. 弟兄姐妹。我们真的没有什么可以夸口的。Brothers and sisters, there's there's nothing that、Amen. we can. Peter 不是很夸口，他一直是跟着耶稣的吗 ？Is wasn't wasn't Peter the one that 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 promised and declared that he will not deny? 怎么几个怎么几个小女子一问他马上就答应 ？How come all of a sudden just because of three servants he denied his Lord? And so this helped me to learn a lesson. That if I leave Jesus, that nothing is possible. 若若不是上帝的怜悯和他的恩典
for by boasting in this. If it's not by his grace that we are all very, very weak. I don't know what weakness you have. But I have to say that I often have weakness. But today we have good news. That in, in, in the Apostle Paul said that God's grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Amen. If you look back in John chapter 1, You'll see that the scripture says grace itself is Jesus Christ. That grace itself comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. And so in other words, if Jesus is in my life, then I have Amen. no reason to fear. Because if Jesus in my life is in my life, then in all things I will have peace. Because his grace is enough for me. What does it mean to be enough? Is that when one amount of grace Amen. comes into my life, there's another amount of grace coming. That God's grace is not just a one time thing, Amen. but it comes like waves rolling over and over. Amen. Amen. That this rolling over and over is just like a wave. That when that wave comes and hits the shore, it pulls back, but then another one comes. And so I declare in Jesus' name that every son and daughter of Christ, that every time you have received the amount of grace, there's another grace coming. That if you have just received an amount of grace, there's another one coming. That there will always be enough for me. But it was like a wave that crashes over and over and over again. That whether we have weakness, if Jesus is in my life, then that grace will always be there in his love for me. Amen. So do not worry about your weakness. But you have to uh, admit to your weakness. Because the more that you are vulnerable to your weakness, the more that God has the ability to bring grace into your life. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you have to grab onto this truth. Something about it. There's no such thing as that. New life is But new life is a church that is so much grace it cannot be used up. It's not because me as a pastor is because Jesus in the midst of us. But when one amount of grace comes, another amount is coming for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How is that good or what? But there's one condition. That we have to be vulnerable, open up our hearts to bring it before the Lord, lay it at His feet. To actually admit to your fault, what does that mean? That's saying, God, I, according to my strength, I cannot do it, but Amen. I'm leaning on you. That means I am admitting my own weakness. So that Christ's power may rest in me. Amen. Amen.
God's grace is never going to be used up. That is why Peter says, For Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then he is strong. I have no shame to confess the weak, the, the, the shortcomings in my life. Because even Paul said, I am a man of weakness. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, why, why did Peter become weak? Oh. Let's read this together. This is another weakness. Peter followed, but at a step distance. It wasn't like before where he would be near with Jesus. Follow Jesus with a step distance. But rather when he encountered a, a, a place of danger and a place where his, his safety was, was at risk, he followed Jesus from a distance. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we said to God, I will closely follow you. That all my life, all I want is to follow you and love you. That I will use my life for your sake. But when circumstances in life came, I believe that every single one of us loves God truly. But is it possible? We follow Jesus from a distance. That sometimes we were like Peter and we follow Jesus from a distance. Amen. And that's why we would become weak because of this distance. Our God is the one that never stops loving us. So let us draw near to him. Let's follow him closely. To not become weak, there is only one solution. That is, follow Jesus closely. Amen. Amen. We are I sincere. What does it mean that, that the, the Father's love is not in me? It means that when the, the more of the things of this world, circumstances come in, the more that we squeeze God out. Love of the world, squeeze out love for the Father. The love of the world squeeze out the love of the Father. That even though we wanted God so badly, but everything that we see in this world that we want, we want, we want, it actually squeezes out God in our life. The thing is, if we if we have won for Christ, then we have won the whole world. The thing is, if we would just pursue His kingdom and then and all things of His righteousness, then all the world will be unto us. But if we chase after the things of this world, sooner or later, it's going to squeeze out God. This is also be a, a reason for our weakness. 
because no longer the love of for the Father is, is our wisdom. And so we thank God that it is in the midst of our failures that God actually helps us to stand up. Alleluia. And so Jesus gave Peter a second chance. Isn't this very similar that to something that happened just a couple years ago? That when Jesus went to the cross, Peter Peter said, you know what, Jesus is dead. Yeah, there's there's no reason for anything. And so Peter said, I'm gonna go back into the old covenant. And so because when Jesus died, Simon says, you know what, I'm gonna go back to the old things. I'm gonna go back to fishing. But little did he know that Jesus came for him. And when Peter went back to fishing, the same thing happened again. It was the same thing where he could not catch any fish. And then that's when Jesus said, hey, did you guys have anything to eat? And so Jesus says again, cast your net to the other side. And it says that they caught so many great fish that day. That when they were pulling in the net, Jesus' beloved disciple who was John said to Peter, Peter, it's, it's Jesus. And Peter's response was when he found that it was the Lord that he took, he put on his clothes and he jumped into the water. He said, oh my goodness, my, my Jesus, he really came back. He is the resurrected Christ. The Bible doesn't say why he puts on a coat to jump into the water. There's a lot of different explanations. If it were me, <laughs> jump into the water and say, you know, I'm not coming up again. Is he coming to rebuke me for denying him? No, 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 no. No. God is a God of love. The Bible says that on that day, Jesus had already, before meeting them, prepared Amen. a meal for them. And so Peter knew that he was a man of Jesus. So failing and making mistakes is not failure. It's Amen. giving up on change is what real failure oh, is. He is an all-knowing God. Does he not know what Peter's thinking in his heart? He already knew that he was going to deny him. He knew that he was gonna Judas was gonna uh, would, would Peter not understand uh, would Jesus understand what's going on inside Peter's heart? Jesus very clearly knows what's going on inside his heart. But it's just because when Peter ran into a dangerous situation that he became weak. And so in other words, Jesus knows that we are also weak. Jesus knows what your specific weakness is. But Jesus also knows that you love that you love him. But that sometimes we might fall.
that's what we all want to know. But don't forget, he already is praying for us. Before Peter had failed, Jesus already was praying. Before you had even Amen. failed, Jesus was already praying for you. So when, when, when Jesus resurrected from the grave, it was so that Peter could start again. Amen. So brothers and sisters, do not be afraid to face the, the, the mistakes and the failures. Jesus went to the cross so that we can have victory. Amen. If Jesus can overcome the grave, then there's nothing that he cannot overcome for us in our life. So every sin in our life must leave. Every weakness in our life will become our strength. Every poverty will become a blessing. Those of us that have failed, we will stand again. Let's stand together. Let's take our weaknesses this morning and give it to the Lord. If Peter can stand again, then we can definitely stand again. Jesus gave Peter many chances. This morning, grab on to these opportunities. All we need is Jesus. You are I was you Hallelujah. Lay your weakness before God. Just spend some time with the Lord. 